Welcome to the Pharmacy Podcast Show. You are listening to the first and only podcast dedicated to the business of pharmacy. You can find all of our episodes at PharmacyPodcast.com. Hello, this is Ali Khalife, President and CEO of Keycentrics, and you are listening to the Pharmacy Podcast. Pharmacy Podcast Network, welcome back to the Pharmacy Podcast. I am the founder of the Pharmacy Podcast Network, Todd Yuri. Excited about today's guest because I've actually worked with this guy. I have uh, elbow to elbow been in negotiating of pharmacy technology systems deals and have leveraged this man's intelligence and helping to win and, and support independently owned pharmacy in long-term care, retail, and specialty pharmacy. I would like to welcome Ellie Khalifi, president of Keycentrics to the Pharmacy Podcast. Hello, Ellie, how are you? How are you, Todd? Thank you for welcoming me, and I'm excited to be here today. I'm excited as well. This isn't your first time on the show. You were able to help me and gave us a little uh, snippet and hint into uh, a little bit about uh, the Keycentrics uh, family of services and solutions that you provide. You've been in this uh, marketplace for quite some time, uh, becoming part of the team over at Keycentrics um, in Wichita, Kansas, headquartered in Wichita since 2008, and you were senior operations executive, and then you took the helm in 2012. And I'll tell you what, since 2012, Keycentrics has been transforming. You are not sitting still. So just give us an overview of the company Keycentrics for those people that are listening and pharmacy executives who are listening who might not know, and then just a little bit about yourself. Well, thank you, Todd, again. Uh, Keycentrics is not a new company. It's not a newborn. I mean, it's, it, it has been in existence since 1973 with multiple systems uh, that innovated and, you know, where, where the the strong pillars of the pharmacy market from um, claim adjudication to, to claim, claim filing, claim billing. Keycentrics have seen multiple, multiple eras. Until I joined in 2007, actually end of 2000, 2007, 2008, um, we had a character-based system, Script Master, and started moving into the Windows-based environment with positioning Rx Key as one of the major retail uh, community pharmacy technology applications. Um, I was fortunate to work with extremely talented people from business analysts and salespeople that not only knew how to sell but had their ears really stuck to the market trying to hear the music before the music has, was, was written. So this, this gave us the leverage to be innovative, to be fast to market. Uh, we're a small and nimble company in size, but with really big impact in the market. We were fortunate also to be supported by pioneers in the market that allowed us in 2012 to create and be part of the National Association of Specialty Pharmacy. Um, as one of the founders, we, I, had, I had to be elbow to elbow with the main people that define, define specialty pharmacy today and people that fight for the independence and fight for specialty pharmacy as a whole. So again, the company is, has seen multiple, multiple eras we got we got in front of those large specialty pharmacies before the National Association of Specialty Pharmacy was formed. It tailored what we uh, what we have today, New Leaf RX. New Leaf RX that is a fully configurable workflow that has a fully configurable workflow with uh, heavy in business intelligence, the heavy in data data analytics. This is what is needed by. Specialty, this is what is needed by independence with the evolution of uh, the market as a whole. The response to your customers' needs, Ellie, was really key in drafting what became these different systems, starting with RxKey 
and evolving into um, a point of cell system that then became flex tracks and then the birth of new leaf rx which was so exciting for me i actually was um, part of the team and in, in helping to understand market needs and bringing in different customers who were who were hybrid pharmacy providers these are guys that were it primarily in community pharmacy, but sure enough, they had patients that were suffering specific disease states and they wanted to know how do we keep our customers, but be able to manage the disease state correctly. And when they looked to the Keycentrics team, Keycentrics responded by developing um, the, the New Leaf RX system, which I think was, was pretty innovative. And, and you were doing this before it was really called a specialty pharmacy system. So Share a little bit more about that, the roots of, of what new, uh, new Leaf RX is with our, with our listeners. So it's, you know, it's, we, were, we were put into the specialty arena uh, with one of um, previously co- client called Medfusion that later was purchased, acquired. And um, these people now are no longer with... Um, with Medfusion or the acquirer, and they came back to us to be on New Leaf. They, they were the creators, the founders of the, those needs in, in RX Key, and now they are coming back to, to have New Leaf installed in, into their environments. So it started with this company, Medfusion. They had a need to track synergous drugs and they were, you know, they, they, they came to us as just a retail. So they were doing other, other items and they started dispensing synergous drugs and they required that we increase the number of um, characters and the pricing field. So it went from six digits to eight and nine digits. So we got, we got curious to what type of drugs are these? What exposure, what treatments are they? And then we found out that they, they became the founding fathers for having specialty into, into Rx Key. It evolved from, the, from Medfusion to opening other arenas for us with, if I may uh, mention Diplomat, the apothecary shop that now became Avila, uh, Amber Pharmacy, that's now is High V, and Mom's Pharmacy, which is the foundation, the AIDS Foundation. So these people were part of our due diligence. They helped a lot in founding the uh, the structure of New Leaf RX. Luckily, we we have we still have a very strong relationship with these people. They they were very instrumental in, in, supporting, in supporting us as a company. Uh, and I thank every one of them, every one of the leaders um, of those companies. They do serve also in, at the board of the National Association of Specialty Pharmacy, so I get the, the chance to see them and you know, to shake hands every now and then. Uh, they also participate in the work groups that I'm part of with, with NASP. So... Coming back to, to Keycentrics, after, after creating uh, what is the advanced modules of, of Rx Key at that point, uh, we started enrolling more people in, in different segments, whether it was from the clinical side or from the manufacturer side, they also gave us the insight of what other segments will benefit from a more advanced package. So... Today, we, we touch long-term care, specialty pharmacies, clinic pharmacies, advanced 340B, uh, outpatient pharmacies, definitely independent and retail, and uh, any hybrid, hybrid environment. All of those with one system that is fully configurable. Yeah, but I think what is interesting, unless you really have spent some time in the world of pharmacy software and and many of our customers and your customers just expect things to work. I think it's under 
explained about that evolution because your system is able to deliver a configurable and customizable community environment. You're able to help grow the pharmacy's business through long-term care pharmacy and senior care pharmacy. You're able to help grow if a, if a entrepreneurial pharmacy owner wanted to get into the mail service environment, you're able to tap into um, the specialty pharmacy marketplace because of the rich uh, intelligence of the history of the organization insisting some of these major powerhouses in specialty pharmacy today. So I just, I stand back and look at what, what Keycentrics has done and what your teams have done based on the needs of your customers to help them stay competitive. There's just so much sincerity here, Ellie, that, that it's always, it's always been why I've been a fan of the, of the key centrics, not only team, but just your, your methodologies and how you develop software. Great. We'll be right back. But first a word from our sponsor. Keycentrics has been leading and guiding the pharmacy industry for over 40 years. A forerunner of innovation and technology, Keycentrics more than delivers pharmacy software solutions to the ever-expanding complex network of healthcare. The heart of Keycentrics is dedicated to restoring patient health and promoting patient compliance by the continuation of care through pharmacy management. Keycentrics brings pharmacy management to a comprehensive level of understanding and precision unlike anything available in the industry. Keycentrics new Leaf RX pharmacy management software revolutionizes this opportunity for specialty pharmacy markets. New Leaf RX thinks like a pharmacist and a prescriber at the same time, while also providing the data needed for decisions from every other contributor in the healthcare ecosystem. New Leaf RX will lead to successful outcome-based processes, guaranteed. At the end of the day, Keycentrics software packages have what every pharmacy has been looking for. New Leaf RX is the next level of pharmacy management systems. For more information and to experience a demo, visit Keycentrics.com. Todd, the objective of Keycentrics and the objective of companies that really wants to be successful is not to do everything and to be masters of everything. We, we wanted to choose an area where we could really contribute to the success of our customers, the success of uh, the patient, take, really taking care of the patient and taking care of the pharmacy. So we elected to focus on areas where we will make the biggest impact. We wanted to be nimble in doing these things and also partners with really amazing people <coughs> that will deliver uh, services and we hold these people to the standards that we want to deliver to our clients so if we if we have to go and spend more time in producing quality work we are also holding our partners to the same level because after all the pharmacy system or the pharmacist is using our application as the um, system of reference we don't want them to to jump from one one area to the other one system to the other we want so we go the extra mile to make it easier on our on our clients and we do treat them as family we don't treat them as clients you know we are in that together because it boils down to again the patient being able to to get their treatment the pharmacist have, having the tools to be able to do the counseling and getting paid. The, the wholesaler and prescriber getting the data back so that they can have proper information on the continuation of care. And God give them the reason the PBM is making the money. So... Um, the interaction that we have in the system, being able to interact with all these actors is, is exceptional. The data that we, we track in the system without external help, all in the system with audit tables is, is extreme, still with an affordable, um, affordable point for, for those pharmacies to be, to be competitive with the chains and uh, 
the larger, the bigger, bigger companies. We, we give the opportunity to the independent and retail to be able to choose whether they want to stay in retail using a simplified uh, workflow, or we give them also the, the chance to grow with the system and consult with us on how to diversify their, um, their business to, to service more, more clients, more people, facilities, <clears throat> and using only one, one pharmacy system, one workflow that is fully configurable. So we give them, we give them the chance, we give more than, more than technology to them. So the challenges are pretty immense for a pharmacy owner. If you're pure play community, if you're a mixture hybrid, if you're purely in specialty, the, the something that you mentioned about PBMs immediately made me think of DIR fees and made me think of big data and made me think of value-based healthcare. And those three subjects are intertwined. And what I want you to share, because you and I have had conversations offline about all three of these things, tell us how the key centrics entity technology, the platform, and your uh, very robust customer service team that's been there for really forever, led by some amazing people. Tell me how you're helping customers uh, stay competitive with this landscape of of nothing but seemingly barriers forever. So Keycentrics, we empower the pharmacist with tools to help, bel- to help build better healthcare outcomes with patient, prescribers, manufacturers interactions. And because we understand that the value that we provide is going to be transparent and transmitted back to the, as value to the other actors in the ecosystem. So when you talk about value-based care, you, some people can do the interpretation of value as money, value as services, and value as outcome, and, and patients becoming, becoming you know, fe- feeling better when, when they go to pharmacies that are running our application, <laughs> allowing you know, the pharmacists to have more time on their hands, tracking the proper, the proper data in the system, and giving them more time to interact with the patient, because the system is easy to use, and they have the support of people that are highly qualified. Everyone that we have in the, in the company on the support desk, they are either a, a pharmacy technician or they, they worked in pharmacy for a long period of time, heavy, heavily um, talented in, in technology so that pharmacies are not, that don't find themselves hanging on the phone for a long period of time. They have the answers that are needed to set uh, the counseling of, of the patients. So with these people, these, um, these teams, they are highly qualified and they are even being helped on a daily basis by management that is also involved in, in pharmacy. We have pharmacists on staff. And we have people that are uh, experts in every area of pharmacy and every area of technology that touches the pharmacy and touches the technology of POS, of EMV, of intercommunication with EMR systems. <clears throat> so this is about the teams of Keycentrics and visionaries in the company. Plus the company has many consultants, external consultants that sits on the board that interacts with our, with our customers, interact with the industry, and we do have customers uh, that, are, that sits on the client advisory board that will give us more information, more input on what is coming next or what they would like to see done better. So 
there is a full interaction. We don't work in a vacuum. We work very heavily with all our partners. They are stakeholders of the company. And whoever tells you that, you know, I don't have anybody to report to, well, guess what? You still have the customer to report to. They are more important than anybody else in the, in the company. What about the state? I look at the state of pharmacy right now, and we are in a really interesting um, moving. I feel like the, there's plate tectonics happening in the industry of pharmacy right now uh, with the rise of PBMs uh, finally getting hammered with oversight coming, and uh, everybody's angry at, at how the DIR, DIR fees have really manip- been, become manipulative in, in doing things to um, the pharmacy provider that should never happen in any line of business, let alone healthcare. And then I look at this latest news about the Amazon entering the wholesaler space possibly, and it's undefined. And I see what population health means to um, full population health outcomes. And your blog, by the way, Ellie, is just filled with so much intelligence with um, the brick and mortar pharmacy online pharmacies that you published back in, in August and, and what you're, what you're really sharing with um, the business of pharmacy and the, the, the stakeholders out there. So you've been in this long enough and you've seen things shift and you've seen things changed and conglomerates eating each other and in, in mergers. So give us your oversight of the future of pharmacy um, as, as we sit today. You know, starting with DIR fees, um, DIR fees are now like like a fashion. Um, when when before there was other other areas where the PBMs were making money, nobody talked about DIR fees. As the specialty pharmacy market started growing, and they see they see more avenues to to make more money, they start instigating more ways of you know penalizing. Uh, penalizing the independence in a way. And, penal- and by independence, they could be specialty pharmacies ran as independents or independents as a whole trying to get into more lucrative business. Instigating this DIR fees does not only stop at the specialty medicine medication itself. It is globally on every, every single drug with this clawback, rule that they are implementing to protect themselves, to protect the, the, the business of pharmacy as a PBM, and to reduce the amount of exposure of those manufacturers back to the independent pharmacies to give them more, more uphand. DIR fees, to my, I mean, if I, I don't like to speak about politics, but they should not. They should not be part of, uh, of the, the practice of pharmacy. They are, it's money, it's even, it's worse than a tax. It's a tax that you cannot calculate today. They can come back to you at any point and tell you, this is how much you're going to pay. And guess what? I'm the PBM. If you are not going to pay it, I'm going to stop servicing you. You'll be disqualified. No matter what you do, they have the up. They have the up on you. Uh, I really believe that what NASP is doing Trying to get those DIR fees out of the picture is the way to go. I appreciate that NCPA during you know their, their last show they had they had a um, a session about DIR fees and they are lobbying to have the DIR fees at adjudication. Well, guess what? You shouldn't be even looking at DIR fees. Why would you be paying DIR fees? There are other measures that could be put in place to improve the, the practice of pharmacy without penalizing them after the fact or immediately. With doing that, you are restricting the, the dollars that they are spending with manufacturers. Everybody, you know, everybody is going against the manufacturers because their pricing is too high. Well, guess what? The pricing is too high. You're, you, the PBMs are fighting, the plans, the plans and PBMs are fighting to reimburse patients and cure them. 
the lobbying of hospitals is so strong and they want to make money. So the PBMs play, play the game that, you know, you have to comply with those rules. Otherwise, you are going to be, to be hit with DIR fees, not only on your specialty drugs, but on all the drugs that goes around, around the specialty, uh, deli basically delivery or fail, the specialty fail, and they penalize the pharmacy on all those fails. So the pharmacy is not making money. The manufacturer will continue to raise their prices because of, as the pharmacy is not making money, they cannot purchase more. So the supply and demand is hit one more time. The patient is not benefiting from it because the pharmacy is not making money. And the pharmacy is losing, losing, the, losing the script to the PBMs that themselves can fill it and not be hit with the DIR fees that they are imposing on, on other uh, partners. Because at the end, the pharmacy is the partner of the PBM. Even though they, they keep 18 to 20% of, uh, of the revenue that is normally due to the pharmacy for dispensing those drugs, they are kicking them out. So my call today is for the SEC to put, to put a, an end to this, to force CMS and, and put a, an end to that with the practice of PBMs on the IR fees. I completely agree with you. Making the, the playing field semi-level again and another factor of all this that I really wanted to get your views on is the entering into the pharmaceutical industry with a player like Amazon with, and this is all speculation, of course, but you know, the, the news recently has been they're filing for uh, drug wholesaler licensing and their infrastructure. We all know as someone who's addicted to prime, I can't help myself sometimes uh, ordering things that I just don't want to walk into the store for, but boy, I tell you what, if uh, in my imagination, if, if community specialty, long-term care, privately owned, I say privately owned pharmacy instead of independently owned pharmacy, but those organizations, there's 25,000 plus of them out there. If there was a way to leverage um, the, the Amazon play as becoming a drug wholesaler and then having seniors or people walk into your store and, and pick up other products that might become a place to 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 educate the marketplace for all things healthcare and healthcare destinations through your through your pharmacy provider. I think that would be interesting. But what are your thoughts on on Amazon entering the, the pharmacy space? Well I want to talk about two two areas here. You mentioned big data earlier and then the conglomerate that Amazon is has brought so far and could bring once they become a fully licensed uh, provider of uh, pharmace pharmacies for pharmaceuticals and wholesale and their impact. Amazon today is one of the largest companies in the world, coming to hitting probably a trillion dollar, as a trillion dollar company. They have built, Jeff Bezos built his, uh, his empire being influenced by Sam Walton. The concept of buy big, sell, <clears throat> sell retail, transparency, and um, basically transparency of, of delivery and servicing, servicing the market, each their market. They have the data. As a big company, everything that you do, they have record of it. All your behavioral purchases, searches, and everything, right. they have records. Yep. They have been in pharmacy sales, not the controlled pharmacy, not the controlled substances or uh, drug dispensing. They have been on over-the-counter, so you can buy anything that you want from Amazon for an over-the-counter. Over they have access, international access, so you can still purchase acqu and acquire Canadian drugs or drugs from anywhere in the world. They have access to, um, you know, oils and 
consumables that are marijuana based, well, whether they are medicinal or just, or vaping or whatever. So you have access to everything and anything on Amazon. They have access to big, big data. Right. And um, their process of buying left and right without necessarily stocking inventory. So their open platform allowing anybody, any consumer to become a vendor, consumer to consumer. This is extremely important in this era and it's going to be extremely important once they become, once they go into, into pharmacy as a whole. This morning's news that they have filed and they have been approved to be a wholesaler for uh, certain, I mean, to, be, to have some wholesale in, in, in certain states is amazing because they are going to introduce transparency again in the market in an area where the competition and the regulation is extremely high. Is it easy to do? The answer is no, but it's after all, it is Amazon. So they have the money to be able to study it, to get over it and participate as a competitor, as a major competitor and make those people more transparent to, uh, to the market. You have mentioned that it would be great if the independent pharmacies will enroll in the Amazon programs and become spots and areas and borns to, um, to dispensing those drugs. Is it, is it easy to do? The answer is, you know, other pharmacy, other, sorry, other uh, retailers have done it. Amazon contracted with multiple people. They acquired uh, Whole Food so right. that they can, they can have access to more organic, better distribution, yeah. fat, bigger, bigger uh, foot, uh, footsteps. So they could, they could do it through Whole Foods, they could do it definitely through the independent retail stores. I'm certain that we will see it in not too long. Amazon will have a program that will incentivize those independent retail to have portals into Amazon to dispense those, those medications. Now the other questions, we are in, we are in technology, so what system would Amazon put in place so that it is HIPAA compliant, being able to at, at first refill certain drugs, interface with those independent retails, retailers from based on zip code, patient zip code, or whether they are traveling or not. So what infrastructure will be put in place and how will it interact with all the actors in pharmacy. What is our role as technologists in this, in this game? Where would um, pharmacy systems stand once this happens? Because it is going to happen. And they are going to be successful because again, the consumer at the end is going to look at the cheapest, most transparent way to fill their drugs. You can look at Walmart when they created the uh, the four dollar right. uh, four dollar generic. Th generic. Yep. Well, Amazon Amazon will be there, and it will be either cheaper, or they'll get they'll give incentives back. You can buy with Amazon dollars your refills. So the more you consume, the more you consume. Another oh. area that I would like to talk about. Those patients, because after all, everybody is servicing the consumer, the end user. What can we find? What can we do for those consumers to be more compliant and for them to pay less? Today, there are, there are uh, companies that we partner with that are uh, servicing this type of market. Some of them, you know, they come through manufacturer programs with e-vouchers, with um, third-party third payers and uh, adjudicators. 
and some other companies are actually going straight to the patient, helping in reducing the copay, the out of pocket, and sometimes actually incentivizing the patient so that the patients are getting paid by the manufacturer to be compliant. That sometimes will exceed the copay. This is another area where the independents should be looking at that. They will make more money. Their patients will be more compliant, and they will get they get better better service from the manufacturers. Exactly, and if you walk into a community independently owned pharmacy and you look at their front end and you look at the products that they have, the healthcare products that they have, just like you said earlier, Ellie, there could be massage oils, there could be DME equipment, there could be um, over the counter, there could be, so the, the conduit and the wholesale tracking and the wholesale metrics, as well as the intelligence, by the way, of buyer habit based on the patient is immense amounts of data that's accessible through the conduit of what is Amazon. So I'm, I'm interested. I'm not for it and I'm not against it, but I have an open mind because I believe in creativity and I believe in innovation, which is why I believe in key centrics. You guys are definitely innovative. So creative. Um, I appreciate you guys being on the show and being a sponsor of the, of the pharmacy podcast network and the specialty pharmacy podcast. I'm excited about you coming back and your team uh, sharing an additional thoughts, um, even some of the customers that are part of your family uh, sharing their thoughts of, of the Keycentrics um, uh, platform and the platforms that are under your umbrella. But I just wanted to thank you, Ellie, for being on the show. Well, thank you again. And uh, I'm sure that we will we'll talk soon and we'll get some of our clients also talking about their experience and the market and their uh, their insights to where the market is going. We will. Thank Mr. Ellie Khalifi, thank you so much, Keycentrics. You're listening to the Pharmacy Podcast, and we thank you for listening. <laughs>